I come from a fine arts background. Um, I studied painting and intaglio in college in Vancouver, BC. I'm originally from uh, northern Manitoba, Canada, so way up north, lots of snow. So um, I feel like it really fed my imagination because there really wasn't much to do up there. Uh, so I spent all the time drawing, painting, always just two-dimensional work. Um, but after I would paint, I would feel kind of unsatisfied and I have to get on my bicycle and go and ride or like I felt like I had too much pent up creative energy. Um, so uh, I continued doing that until um, as an associate of mine uh, at my day job, she suggested to me that, you know, maybe you should be working in glass. And I said that she was absolutely crazy. Why would I want to work in glass? Uh, she came over to my studio and she saw my paintings and she goes, well, everything had kind of a circular movement to it. And she said, you absolutely should be working in glass. And she came back the next day and handed me a, a catalog to the Pilchuck Glass School. So I thought, well, this is ridiculous. I don't want to make perfume bottles. That's all I knew. I didn't know what was going on with glass here in the States at all. So um, I applied because I was curious and I got in. So I went uh, to my first class and it was a mixed media one and I walked into the hot shop before the class started and I saw everybody moving around and making all these amazing sculptural pieces. Um, people weren't blowing bowls, they weren't making wine glasses, they were just working with the material and it was the most beautiful thing that I had seen and uh, I, I was just instantly just pulled over. And uh, so the class, I went through the class and I was in the hot shop as much as I could to learn. And I was just kind of in everybody's face trying to, you know, can I help, can I help? And um, people were always so generous and letting me help and learn. So I went back to Vancouver where I was living. I'd practiced blowing glass with my broom. Um, I was really smitten. So um, I asked around all the glass studios in Vancouver if anybody would teach me. And they all said, no, we're too busy. So I started driving to Seattle. It's a three hour drive. So I work in Vancouver as a graphic designer in the daytime, drive to Seattle at about 4 p.m. for a 7 p.m. class, class till 10, drive home, go back to work in the morning. <laughs> uh, I did that two times a week. And uh, fortunately, the people I had met at Pilchuck the first time I went uh, were William Morris, um, Karen Willenbrink Johnson, uh, and I met my husband, Rick Allen, too. Um, and we all were instant friends. So when they, we were keeping in touch, and when they found out I was doing this crazy commute, they said, why don't you come down and work with us a little bit? Um, you know, we could use an extra hand. So I did that, and then they saw that I was absolutely, uh, you know, just obsessed and needed to learn. And they just invited me to come down every week. So I learned a lot from apprenticing with them. During that time, my relationship with Rick blossomed and uh, we got married so I moved there permanently um, and then William Morris asked if I could work on his team he had a special project needed an extra hand uh, so I was really lucky to work with that team and with him uh, I was there for about five years uh, I, I never had a formal glass education except for taking short workshops here and there but working with them I realized that they're not working as glass blowers, they're working as artists. They're working as sculptors. So I would walk in in the you know in the morning, and Bill would be like, "Well, I'm not really sure what we're going to make." And then he'd start working, and you could see that this idea took form. And then all the soul and vision went into the work, and I would just be like, just blown away at what was being done every day. And and I learned so much. Um, and working with him too, he was so generous. He wanted to kind of bring out the best in everybody. So he knew I had a painting background. So he'd say, hey, Shelly, what colors can I use for this? Or can you make me a bit that's gonna be like, you know, painterly or, you know, he'd have, he'd kind of try and draw that out. So I also felt very, you know, honored that he wanted to work in that method with his, with his uh, assistants. Um, and then from then, um, uh, Rick and I had been married. We bought a place that we could start our own glass shop got a glass studio going so i left working with bill uh, rick kept working with him as his cold worker for a few more years until he retired and in the meantime i got you know my own work the momentum going and started showing and um and yeah and then it just kind of snowballed and we're here today yeah and we still have our shop going it's been uh 
I'd say 17 years wow. since we started our shop. And I think that what I'm what I'm finding, like even you know today, I, I'm I feel so lucky to get invited to places to work with, you know, a whole new group of people and to you know kind of demonstrate and share. Um, and uh, um, like today, I I feel like I learned so much. You know, every day that I go in and work in work with glass, I learn so much. So so it's definitely a lifetime medium, and uh, that satisfaction with working with the material is fully there like i feel like i have used you know the full spatial um, movement and development of sculpture when you because it's just you know your focus is so intense the piece is constantly moving so it's um it's it's really a remarkable material to work with I would say, so when you start learning to blow glass, you have to just use transparent and really basic forms. Um, be, but because I have the fine arts background and had worked as a painter and a graphic designer, and you know, I had that, that um, the idea of layering paint, uh, the way, you know, mixing colors. So once I got more of a handle on glass, I started trying to like work like I would on a painting on the sculpture. So a lot of the textures, and, and they do look very stone-like in certain lighting, but if you hold them up or the light shines, the, you'll see the light uh, pass through the piece and you know light up certain areas that might be more translucent. Um, and uh, uh, so that's, that's where it's, it's kind of a really, uh, continues to be challenging because I want to have that play. Like I, want, I would want the piece to change throughout the day as the sun passes by. Um, and the whole um, working with the animal forms and natural forms, uh, that came from my childhood. I've just spent as much time as I can outside. I'm always like, if I can be outside, it doesn't matter what the weather is, I'm, I'm really happy. If I'm, if I'm not working in the hot shop, I try and just be, you know, either gardening, hiking, drawing, but just all outside. Um, I, just, I just feel more at home there uh, and I spent a lot of time just observing like insects and animals and we live rurally so I see a lot uh, we've had mountain lions pass through our property wolves uh, lots of deer plenty of deer so I get a lot of face time so that's why today I chose the deer because I have a lot of time staring face to face with deer so it's <laughs> um, definitely I, I like to work with what I see uh, and then just use the patterns to kind of heighten the experience of looking at the animal. I mean, I'm, I'm, I, I feel so much about the state of the environment that I can barely even, you know, talk about it, but um, I, did, didn't want to make work that would hit people over the head with the message like, you know, we got to do something because I find people recoil and you get so tired of that. So with the work that I'm doing, I'm hoping to bring attention to the animals, the species that I'm making. Um, I've been focusing a lot on rhinoceroses and polar bears, um, endangered species, and I'm hoping that by, you know, placing them in the limelight by working with them, that people will have that moment to look at them and think about the situation. I've recently made a series that I'm calling Harbor, meaning protect, um, and there are those species and I've put life preservers on them. Uh, they're in the Studio A, so you can take a look at them there. But um, And so they're kind of, they're a little bit humorous, but uh, I wanted the message to be hopeful. I want it to be like, like we can still do something about it, like please pay attention, but I want it to be a good, uh, more lighthearted way to get across so that it stays all positive um, because we've got so many things going on right now that I think we need to just have a little, you know, a smile and, and know that we can, we can still work towards this and, and help to save these species. But it is definitely something that, is, that I'm working more and more with uh, and trying to m maybe make my message a little stronger, a celebration of those species and bringing them to, um, like a, a, putting them on a pedestal, you know, holding them in reverence. Yeah, 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 so that we don't forget. 
so many people using glass as an art medium and I think that it's just like we just need to accept it into the art world because there are people who use ceramics to make functional wear. There are people who use ceramics to make artwork and that's been accepted. And I find that the glass is this very similar, similar uh, things are happening in glass. I mean, people are, they're, they're making functional wear, they're making conceptual work with glass. It's, it's, there's such a broad range that I think we can't pigeonhole it to being just a craft that I think that it's definitely time to elevate it to the art level and uh, there, the glass has been specifically shown in glass galleries because I think glass is such a different material to use it that um, the ga glass galleries are very important to educate the viewers on what the medium is, the processes. Uh, you know, the, it's, very, it's been really important to have them to bring glass up to this level because otherwise it would just be, you know, the whole idea behind what it takes to make wouldn't be known. And it's such a fascinating process. So, so yeah, um, I really, the, the disparity between the art and craft and is glass, you know, is it in the art realm? I would say absolutely yes, <laughs> absolutely. Well, Imagine Museum is an incredible place. I, I, my husband and I came to the opening a few years back and uh, we were just blown away. It was such a wonderful experience to walk through there and to see the history, like the chronological and then see thematic rooms uh, with you know, similar subject matter. Um, I just found it, it's absolutely important for the education of the public. And I think it also being so accessible to the public is really important because oftentimes people won't go to a gallery if they don't know what you know they don't know how to express themselves about artwork but they'll tend to go to a museum you know and it's got such it's so welcoming it's got such bright colors and it's just a really comfortable place to to go and and to feel comfortable no matter what you know about artwork or glass yeah i think i think a place like that is so valuable and i'm Honestly, I'm so thrilled to be part of it. The team is so important. And when when I first started my shop, I was like, oh my goodness, I've got to have, like to get the momentum going, I've got to have a team that comes in every week. So I, you know, there were, it, it, it's kind of interesting how people just suddenly they call you up and they're like, hey, do you need any help? So I actually had that happen. People heard we had started our shop and I had a few people approach and say I'm available. So that was how it started. And uh, and then I'll, I'll teach maybe once a year or once every couple of years. And there's often a student who stands out and they wanna to move to Seattle. So they end up coming up and being part of the team. And over the past, you know, 17 years, my team has it's shifted, you know, I, I, I slowly, you know, a team, people who work for you are usually, well, usually by late thirties, they're already like, oh, I can't move this heavy piece around, you know, like it's, <laughs> it's definitely has its limits. And, and I mean, I worked as an assistant through my twenties and thirties too. So I, I know how that felt and you kind of have a time where you've got to stop and move on. So uh, fortunately there's been always somebody there starting when that person is ready, like the top team is ready to leave and go on and find their own career, then that person has learned enough to kind of move up to that level. So um, I usually have between one to four people who I work with depending on the scale. Um, there's enough people uh, that, like Dan today who worked with me, he has worked um, at the Duncan McClellan student studio. So he's has a bit of um, you know a broad range of his skills so I had no hesitation when because he contacted saying do you need a hand and and so I you know asked him where he worked and he told me I was like oh absolutely you can come in and help and they and, and Noah had never done that kind of work before but he was fantastic and he was just he said I can watch and I and I can learn really quick is what he told me and you know <laughs> He, he rocked it. <laughs> yeah. it. Usually there's a, you know, it's more um, men who are available as assistants, but I always try and find the, find a woman to come and work too. So it's always nice to have that kind of balance too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, and I do rely so heavily on them and every, anyone, it's pretty apparent when somebody 
doesn't work out right away, like they don't even end up assisting anybody, like they kind of get out of that scene, because you definitely need the right kind of personality to do that kind of work. It's, it's tough work for sure to, to assist in the glass shop. <laughs> With glass, because it's such a sensual material, um, the the heat, the smell, the light, uh, it all transcends you to another dimension, just working with it. Um, and then after the fact, when you can cast a, you know, some kind of movement on the wall by directing a light through the piece, and then that changes every second, it does, it absolutely captures the fourth dimension. It takes you to a place that I, I don't think that we're really, that you can't really rationally describe. Yeah, yeah, it's just, um, it's movement. Yeah, it's light and movement. Shelly Mozolowski-Allen, this is for Imagine Museum.